the Germans were reiterating, as they did from the moment they entered Hungary, that, oh, the Jews will be moved somewhere to the east uh, with their families and they will be able to work uh, for German victory. And we had no reason to disbelieve. We were marched off to the other end of town where uh, a regional ghetto was established. Primitive conditions, no water, no electricity or gas. Uh, virtually no sanitation, very little food. A few days after that, the SS came in in force with dogs and submachine guns, pickaxe handles and so on. And uh, we were forced into a train of cattle trucks, uh, about 80 people to the wagon. Uh, the doors were shut. Two and a half, three days later, the train pulled up and there was a station sign saying we were at Auschwitz. Nobody ever heard of Auschwitz, so for just another station, and we had to get off the train. Quite a number of people uh, dying on the journey, there were infants and under the old people amongst us. And we had to line up on the uh, platform and and move in front of uh, some SS officers who were picking people either to go to a right or to a left. 30, 35 people from the family were on the train. Father, uh, mother, uh, uncles, the youngest child was probably about three. Uh, we were told to go to one side or the other. And uh, the very much smaller group was quite obviously sort of more working age people. And with my father and just one of my uncles, I was in this smaller group. And all the rest of the family, uh, old people in the other, in the other one, we were told that the families are going off to the family accommodation we are going into the camp itself, and then we will meet up with the families. And, well, we never did. They were taken straight to the gas chambers and done away with that day, and lost well, a mother and 30 odd members of the family. And we were taken into a camp, into one of the barracks, woefully inadequate for the number, the number, uh, but about a thousand people were put into this one barrack. Uh, extremely crowded, there's no way of lying down. Uh, and from the other people who were already in the camp for some time, we found out almost immediately that what happened to our families. We were taken some 300 miles to the west, uh, very close to the Rhine, to Bochum, uh, big, big steel and coal town, uh, with the biggest uh, armament factory, because by that time the Germans were so desperate to uh, get more and more ammunition and armament uh, uh, ready. I was with my father until he died there. He died in uh, the camp in uh, December. It was getting weaker and weaker uh, in the camp. And Germans um, always said you know, everybody died a natural death, even if they were short quartered or hung. Well, I had to, I had to carry on. Uh, obviously, it was extremely difficult. I was getting weaker and weaker myself. was in Bochum until March uh, uh, 45. And one could hear shelling and cannon fire in the distance. And the Allied forces were crossing the Rhine. And we were evacuated to the main camp in Buchenwald, uh, by which time I was extremely weak and probably wouldn't have survived very much longer. Then 
then on the 11th of April, the American forces made the final dash and have liberated the camp that day. Uh, I weighed four stones, which 56 pounds. Uh, I was a fully grown, almost six foot tall, in old Over the years since, to a large extent, have overcome the problems that I ended with. But a lot of the memories were still locked within. Mum didn't talk about it even within the family. Uh, but eventually, I could tell. Please help to rescue and preserve more memories of the Second World War. Visit www.war-experience.org.